Hey everyone, I don't get to be in front of the camera too often because I'm watching my kiddo all day and with him running around it's very difficult to produce videos with me in front of the camera. I'm looking at the wall and I'm actually supposed to be sanding and painting them right now because he's not around. But I thought I'd sneak this video in real quick. So today I'll be taking you out to the front yard where I'll show you some of the permaculture practices that I'm having out there. And every year I'm trying to learn something new in, in terms of gardening and permaculture is one of the newer things that I'm doing. It's very reflective of my personality which is a lot of pragmatic based practices. So out there I'm also growing in addition to the landscape plants some more of the ornamental crops and I sneak them in there and you'll see that. And with permaculture it looks as far as its aesthetic it looks more natural. It doesn't look groom and minimalistic and sometimes it, I'm in conflict with that because I also find that well-groomed spaces and minimalistic spaces are up, are um, pretty as well so um, sometimes I'm conflicted but I like to grow things so I guess my pragmatism wins out in this case because it's a lot of dirt out there a lot of space that can be used to grow things that are both pretty and edible so um, it's a little bit unkempt right there, out there. Actually, it's a lot of, lot of uh, overgrowth that needs to be cut back, so I need to do that. So without, without further ado, let's go check it out. This might be a long video because there's a lot going on back out there. So uh, I hope you watch it through the end, and I hope uh, you enjoy it. So let's go. Why, how nice. The hummingbirds just gave us a friendly welcome as we walk through the front door. Starting on the right side of the driveway are a couple of large planters where a green globe artichoke is planted and it was grown from seed and I've had this plant for three years now. This is a Kalakui succulent and it was installed by the landscaper. Next to it are a couple of scarlet carrots and behind it is a black bean that's climbing a forest pansy redbud tree and later in the season the redbud tree will drop all its leaf and the um, bean will take over and provide us with some cover so we don't have a stick looking tree. These are some French heirloom shallots. Zebrune is the variety. I grew these from seed and I like growing shallots. This is a daylily it's got a very interesting bloom. Daylilies typically typically bloom and um, they last a day, but this one's last a couple of days. That was a dwarf curl, uh, blue curled kale. And this is an apple mint. I got that from the farmer's market, thinking it's a Cuban mint, but it's not. This is a purple fountain grass here in Southern California. It's one of the more popular plants that are being installed because of their drought tolerant ways. This is a Russian sage. This was also installed by the landscaper. And behind are some plants that I'm plant sitting and it looks like I'll be plant re rehabilitating. The pots need probably a good dressing of topsoil. It looks kind of horrific right now. So hopefully I can not only keep them alive but return them to the owners in a better condition. I think there are a couple of uh, Japanese maple. That is an Air Couvert fillet bean. That's a flax. Um, that was part of the landscape when we moved here. And this is a canna that my friend Elba gave me. It's a really pretty tropical looking plant. And before this spot had a lot of uh, flax growth, I've cleared it out and maybe put a banana or something. This is the front yard after it was freshly landscaped this was in 2013 late summer this is 2016 spring early spring late spring so with it now being summer the elephant garlic has turned all brown I left it here to show you I have a video of the harvest that I did last year and you can check that out this is a red express cabbage. I grew it 
for the first time it's got really cool purple veins and I'm kind of surprised that it's still here it's not dried up fires of Fiji daylily this is a white mulberry tree and it was started from a cutting by my brother and he gave it to me and I planted it out here these are purple cone flowers or echinacea it was installed by the landscaper these are some Seling Labayon pepper and I received the seeds while waiting for my train to work and I planted those and I got the seeds three years ago next to it was a Thai bird eye pepper and this is a King Richard leek I'm saving its seed I made a video of the harvest and cooking it up so if you're interested check that out too This is a tartan dahlia. It's one of the larger dinner plate size flowers. It didn't bloom last year, so hopefully this year it will. Pardon me, daylily. And um, this is a really cool reblooming re small size daylily, which means it'll bloom from June to um, from about April to June. That was one that I grew from seed, and it bloomed after two years. This is a Rico Asiatic lily. And this is a Casablanca Asiatic lily. I got a bunch of bulbs and I just planted them all over the front yard. False heather. It was installed by land Landscaper. Um, and this is the other red bud tree. It's a pretty cool tree. It's got nice purple flowers. And in the spring, it has really pr uh, nice lavender blossoms. Down below is this afterglow, Echeveria. I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. That was installed by the landscaper. And this is a fennel. Fennels make great landscaping plants, in my opinion. This, they self sow, they can get a little bit invasive, but they are really nice community plants. It, it has space for a lot of insects and you'll see a lot of ladybugs and different types of insects they attract pollinators so if you need bees in your yard they'll bring them to to it this is a utah tall celery that i had grown and i used it in the kitchen and i regrew it from the base of the plant and i wanted to see if it will grow and it looks like it has this is a California Golden Poppy. That's the last bloom probably for the year. And some more elephant garlic. Here are some common thyme. And I come out here and harvest the thyme for cooking. This is a Provence Lavender. That's mostly ornamental. And this is a Rosemary. It's uh, It needs to be cut back. I grew this from a cutting that was about 10 inches long and this is a stargazer lily and a pineapple sage so rosemary they're really easy to grow from cuttings the one that you just saw a photo of in a bottle that was a cutting from this rosemary some Spanish lavender and these were installed by the landscaper they attract a lot of bees to your yard so they're uh, really cool plants to have in here is a dusty miller and some mum chrysanthemums so I'm kind of surprised they're blooming I need to cut back the dusty miller they're really easy to grow plants here are some French drop marigold and earlier in the year this spot was occupied by some freesia next to it is a oriental poppy I grew these from seed I've had this for maybe four or five years now and it hasn't flowered so I don't think it will I'm just keeping it these are Chinese five color pepper. They're also marketed as other names. It's a nice ornamental. I use it as an ornamental pepper. It changes color as it ripens. It's pretty cool. You should check it out. This is a jasmine. It's a Mysore mealy jasmine. It's pretty much a jasmine with like three flowers on top of each other. And next to it 
is are, are some stargazer lilies and below is a dill and next to that is some garlic chive so herbs are really good landscape plants this is a Thai eggplant the cow praia variety and I made a video on harvesting this eggplant and the one next to it earlier in the year it looked like this this area and now it's all filled in so this one here is a Thai lavender frog egg eggplant and behind it is a togarashi pepper togarashi is Japanese for chili pepper So all the beans have really filled this area in. Looks very tropical. This is a lemon verbena, and behind it is a hydrangea. the The flowers are all green now, but earlier they were pink. I think hydrangeas are a good litmus plant. They'll tell you your soil acidity. So with it being green, we're probably uh, neutral now. This is a Vanna tulsi or a tree basil. It's a holy basil and it is a perennial drought tolerant and it holds its seed. This is a California lilac. It's a variegated plant that I I like variegated plants so you'll see that. This is a flax lily or just a flax and below are some Thai bird eye chili. So once again peppers make good ornamental plants in my opinion. You like to have something that you can use in the kitchen and also as a, a thing for your front yard then peppers make good ornamental landscape plants. Over here are some bushes that are overgrown and these are I think pink abelia. They, they attract the hummingbirds to the yard. The hummingbirds just love these things and they grow pretty quick so as far as a permaculture plant it's good for harvesting green waste from. This is a Maiden of Orleans Jasmine. It was one that I requested the landscaper install right next to the front door so the breeze will carry the jasmine scent into the house. This is a cranberry hibiscus. It was installed by the landscaper and it really wasn't really healthy and it finally died this last year but before doing so it left us with some seed pods. With the seeds that it left we have a new plant and it's pretty fast growing and I've learned that you're not supposed to crush the seed pods between your fingers with these guys because they have spikes on them so it was a painful lesson and I've learned to not crush seed pods if I don't know about them so cranberry hibiscus and spinach they are spiky you don't want to crush them open with your fingers moving along this way is um, right underneath the umbrella tree is a peanut plant and peanuts fix nitrogen to the soil so I have peanuts uh, planted around the front yard this is a spiral plumeria so its flowers give these shell like spirals and I've taken a cutting from it and I was happy to be successful with rooting a cutting it looks like it's successfully rooted but the cutting came out of here and I wanted to give it a little bit of a more um, uniform shape so I just chopped it off and stuck it in the ground and or in a pot and it looks like it's grown this kalakui came from the planter and I had I had it in the bucket and it was on its way to the compost bin and it fell out so I'm pretty sure it did like a toy story thing where it jumped out so I thought hmm since it wants to be there, I'll plant it there, and, it, and it's growing. This is a black magic elephant ear. Dark color plants, especially when they are deep, almost black, are pretty cool to me. So you'll see that I try to grow as many of those types of plants as possible. And here is the jasmine that was right by the front door that has shot out this vine. And it's been growing for the last three years now. And I wanted to see how far it'll go, so it's wrapped around the house now. This is a succulent that I'm not remembering the name of. 
This is a Dream Queen Hosta, and it's being grown in this quote unquote shade garden over here. And next to it are a row of black dragon coleus. There are some house plants that are here. I haven't gotten a chance to look up the names, but these two, along with a one you'll see in a second, they were gifted to us by our wedding florist. And it was in a, a potted arrangement. And afterward, I planted it out over here. So it, they're super happy. I didn't think they'll grow this long, but uh, they, they have. This is a fern that was uh, gifted to me by my friend Elba. Ferns, if you're a uh, math enthusiast, are great examples of fractals. This is a hydrangea that was gifted to me by my sister-in-law and it's one of the varieties that probably don't do too well in our California weather so I've been nursing it and this is the rest of the front yard that has um, to be worked on so we're going about it slowly in this bare patch underneath I plant I've uh, installed a bunch of logs so it's kind of a hugel bed at some point I'll put some plants there but in the meantime there's a loofah that's being grown out. Over this way are some more dill. In front of it is a baking potato. And then next to it is a French tarragon. They, they don't grow by seed, so you have to get live plants. And this is another togarashi. It's a fushimi togarashi. And I've got peppers now. Pretty cool. Got a couple of peppers one in each plant and then moving along is a Thai basil it's already producing seeds so I can collect the seeds and plant more I'm behind on basil growing this year this is a patch of garlic chive and in front of it are a bunch of self-sown borage it's a forest of borage and I didn't have the heart to clear it out because it's overgrown. Well, it's not overgrown, but it's outgrown the Asiatic lilies. So they've kind of been, the lilies, they've kind of been drowned out. So now they're a little bit stunted. But once again, I didn't have the heart to pull them out because they're so pretty. These are lamb's ear. I saw these in a really cool floral arrangement and I thought they make really good plants so I sought out the seeds. Marijam and a volunteer Spanish lavender. That is a bearded iris with really dark flowers that are almost black and I planted it out here this year. It's one of three varieties. I'm not sure which one it is and I'm hoping it'll flower. Next to it is a tree Tulsi. So once again another one. And this was one that I featured in the holy basil video that I made. So if you want to check that out. It's a perennial in California. And it's become pretty thick of a tree. So it's grown into the walkway. I have to kind of prune it soon. Down this way is a bamboo. It's still in the pot. Um, I'm not planting it out in the front yard. I just have it here. This is a carnation. It has really deep flowers that are, almost look black, and I found it, or I saw it in the same arrangement that I saw the um, lamb's ear in. So I got the seeds. That was a variegated agapanthus and a volunteer pomegranate. And these are some onions that I threw the seeds. They grew. That was, that was a weed. But the um, Carnation, I didn't know it takes a long time for it to flower. I think we're on the second year and we're not seeing flowers yet, so maybe next year or something. Coming out in the front near the sidewalk are a bunch of plants, and this is where I squeeze more crop in. That's, again, that's a false heather, and this is a love in the mist, it's considered a wildflower. I got a wildflower mix and threw it out here. And now they're self-sowing. That was a seed. That was a flower, and then you earlier saw the seed pod. Looks very alien-like, all around, all the way around. Pineapple sage. 
and explode it, I usually have to cut it back. So I'll do that and let it grow back again. Below is a Clemson spineless okra. I tossed out a bunch of seeds and I got a few plants, a couple of plants. They're a little bit small right now, but it'll take off. This is a blue Oxford clary sage and it's got a really cool flower and stock. So one of my, my favorite flowers. This is daylily. It's in bloom. And this year, it's just a daylily festival. There's been a lot of daylilies blooming. This is a tomatillo. I've got one of two plants. They provide a large canopy of flowers that attract all sorts of pollinators. Mason bees and regular bees and all that. Some peanuts. They're pretty cool plants. They'll start off, their flowers that is, above ground. And once they're pollinated, they'll send a runner down. And I'll look for a flower for you. They have really nice yellow flowers. So once the peanut pollinates, it will send its um, future peanut into the ground. So it's nice to have loose soil for them or even to hill it as they grow. But here in this permaculture setting, it's pretty much um, seed and walk away. So I'm not trying to get peanuts but more I'm trying to help the soil by fixing nitrogen to it. That is a yarrow. So be careful with yarrow. They, they're pretty aggressive. They'll send runners underneath and they'll spread. So just be careful if you plant yarrow. They're also a nice uh, herbal plant. I, I don't use it for any medicinal purposes, but um, a lot of people do. That was a pansy, and that's a volunteer. It was one of the ones that were, it was from one of the ones that was installed by the landscaper. These are dahlia, and dahlia blooming season is over, but in the, early in the spring they have these really pretty dark red flowers. This is a watchman hollyhock, it's one of two, and it has really deep dark red blooms that are almost black so hoping to see that. Below are some more yarrow. They have these happen to be white blossoms. I've seen yellow ones and here is where I plant some of my underground plants. Uh, potatoes. So in a urban permaculture setting potatoes are good for front door planting if you have neighbors that pilfer your crop. Luckily I don't but it's just nice to think that they're good to grow and if someone wanted to pilfer them it, it's a lot of effort to do so. So they're good for front yard especially far away from your house. This is another Clemson spineless okra and it's important to remove the okra as they grow if you want okra as a crop because if you leave them, they will turn, they'll set seed and they won't produce any more okra. So pick them as they grow if you want okra. More daylilies. So these, uh, these ones have a lot of buds. These are, these are really happy this year. It's a daylily year this year. More yarrow. This is a larger cluster of flowers. So they look very um, rustic. Their, their blooms are very rustic. So I'll give you a wide shot here and do a walk by and give you the experience that my neighbors have. So they'll walk by and sometimes they'll stop and see what flowers they can spot or they'll admire a plant or two. And the really cool thing is I think I'm more of an introvert and when I'm out here it's really nice because I get to talk to my neighbors and sometimes with people from outside the community about plants. It's nice connecting with my neighbors over plants and then we share sometimes we share seeds. They've asked me for seeds and I've 
been happy to give the, give it to them, and we share information about plants. Like I learned from my neighbor that yarrow and borage are plants that she used as herbal plants when she was a child. When she sees yarrow, it takes her down a special place in her memory. So this this front yard is my nexus to my community, so I, I really enjoy that. In the pot were some basil and a Gerber daisy. Here are some Kapoor Tulsi, and they have a really nice bubblegum flavor or scent to them if you rough them up. But earlier, the spot was occupied by chestnut garlic. These are four o'clock. They're kind of invasive, so I regret sowing them. Um, they've been there for the last four years now, and I've I've been able to manage them. Coming along this way are sage, and I use them in the in the kitchen. They're really cool plants. I'm going to make some smudge sticks from them. I've been meaning to do that, and I'm trying to see if I can smoke out some of the leaf miners that grow in my citrus trees. So I'm going to experiment with that, and if I get success, I'll report it to you. So that's my front yard. Thanks for coming out and visiting with me. And if you have any questions, please comment below. And I guess I'll catch you next time. Thanks again for watching.